Hi guys! So I am back with another video. Um, it's not a completed project as always and the only reason I it, this one will get shown complete and it will be done very soon. The only reason I'm showing it now is because I feel like sometimes it's easier to kind of show your base and then after show you what I've done. Um, and I've actually had some subbies kind of um, say that I've been really inspiring to them and they would love to see my thought process when I pick out um, embellishments and how I embellish the pages. I'm guessing they were looking at my Christmas mini album. Um, it wasn't a Christmas mini album, but it was the Christmas paper from Heidi Swap that I used to do, to do a really cool mini album for my boss. And that was the only one I believe I shared recently that actually had embellished pages and pictures and all that stuff. And to be honest, that was so easy to pull together just because the paper completely matched the pictures and then there were some other embellishments at Michael's at the time that were like black and red and green. So that was so easy to embellish and I can do a little video um, and add it into that video to kind of show um, for that person that asked. But for now, I'll just talk about this one. So what I am going to do is just show you the base and then come back and show it embellished and I'll think about doing a process video on that. I've never done it before but I will try. So real quick I'll just talk about this mini album. It is a 6x6 six six, and normally you see me do like a more um, like a, a, ugh, a rectangular shaped mini album which is what I normally prefer. So I was actually just playing around with this tutorial just to see how I would like it. And I actually do like the size of it. It's a nice size. It's a 6x6. Six six. And, I mean, come on, what better way to use up all your 6x6 six six pads that we all know we have so many of. So I love it. And real quick, let me put this to the side. For anyone that sees these mini albums and thinks, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like how do I do that? It's honestly so simple. And the tutorials that you follow on YouTube that I'm going to send you to are so so easy to follow. It's a tutorial by my sister Scrapper and I'll try to post it right here and I'll put the link below to her channel. Below would be here, sorry. Um, and what I'll do is I'll link you to video number one and then you can go to her channel and follow throughout the whole series. But honestly it's so simple. All you need is um, paper. 12 by 12 plain cardstock, colored cardstock, pattern paper, whatever you want to do. I happen to use um, plain white cardstock and then I embellished my book with this collection which is the Dear Lizzie Lucky Charm um, by American Crafts. This I actually got at um, TJ Maxx. It was only, oh, hold on, it's only $5.99 for this 12 by 12 so that was super awesome. And then I just happened to have um, I don't know if I got it from TJ Maxx or Tuesday morning, but I also have a 6x6 six six of the same collection. So I used the 6x6 six six mostly, and then um, this wherever I needed some added papers. Because what I did, and you'll see later, is I actually split the papers into two. There's a lot of really pretty girly colors in here, pinks and feminine flowers and things like that. And then there's also, also navy blues and mints and creams. So I was able to split this collection and make two completely different um, style albums. So I have one that's girly and then you're going to see a second one that's more mints and neutrals and even a little nautical um, that you could use for a boy. So I, th I thought that was really cool. So I this is the paper I used. And then as far as tools you're going to need, honestly, um, a ruler, a scoring board. I just use my Martha Stewart and it's just a small one. Um, let me see if I can get a size for you. It is seven and a half by a little bit big, bigger than nine and a half. And this works for me. I know a 12 by 12 will probably be a lot easier, especially when you're going to be working on the hinge system, but it's okay because I make it work. So a scoring board, a ruler, and um, I have just a plain metal ruler, which I love. But uh, if you're going to be making mini albums, I would really, really recommend getting the Tim Holtz ruler um, that I got mine at Michael's. And the reason being is that the, th the thickness of this is the exact thickness that you're going to need when you're setting up your covers and your spine. The spacing is perfect to allow for this fold. If it's too tight or if it's too wide, this whole action here won't work right. 
So trust me when I say um, the spacing is very, very important. Um, so this ruler gives you that. If you don't have this ruler, I would recommend using two pieces of, uh, of chipboard um, to give yourself the proper thickness. And I just use the 12 by 12 chipboard from Michaels, um, which you can see here. It's just the recollections. And um, I just cut it to size. And this is a second um, set of pages that are prepped that I'm working on for another album. So that's what this is. But aside from that, you're just gonna need adhesive. So I use fabric tack on almost everything and I just use a simple tape runner. Um, and that's pretty much it. So paper, adhesive, a ruler, paper trimmer, obviously, but, um, and then just a real quick to show you guys, this is what I say when I say the hinge. It's just paper that's scored and the measurements are all included in the videos. And what it is is each one of these little hinges, your prepped page is going to sit on that and that's going to allow your pages to turn. So that's all that it is. This is the trick behind it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. One more thing for adhesive. I also use this red um, adhesive tape from Michaels. It's the Recollections. And this, um, you'll see where they recommend you using the really heavy duty um, this red tape as opposed to where you could use wet adhesive and where you could use your tape runner but it's I, I would recommend using it on the entire surface of this because you're gonna use it this is gonna be turning all your pages will be turning so when you go to put your adhesive on here to attach to your pages to it I would recommend using this red tape um, they have different kinds so like score tape and all that but this is all I'm able to find just based on my area and it works great tip you will go through a lot of this if you make a lot of these so if you ever come across a good coupon and you don't really need anything at the store just go there and grab some of this tape because it comes in quarter inch half inch and one inch and you'll need all of it all different sizes um, and you'll see when you watch the tutorial why you need a quarter inch because you, you need it to fit in between these small areas here and it's easier just to have it at the right size than to cut it so enough rambling on those are basically all the tools that you're really going to need and anybody can make an album which is so awesome so let me just show you what i have um i use white cardstock as the base for my prepped pages so everything's white and then i just coated it with whatever paper i wanted now i am a, a beginner still i admit i have lots of trouble sometimes along the way and I did happen to have a little bit of trouble when I was making um, this spine. I The papers have to join, and there's a seam here. But I had a really hard time when I put another piece of pattern paper over. For some reason, I couldn't get it to look nice. And I had to take it off twice. And I was getting really, really frustrated because my whole book was put together, and that was the last step. So I just went in my stash and figure out a solution. So I actually used some rosette trim that I got from Hobby Lobby that just happened to be a really nice coordinating like color to the collection. So I just used my fabric tack and covered it with that. And it actually it's it's really nice. It's not bulky. It's not too bad. Um, I think it came out really cute. So whatever. Um, so I haven't finished the cover yet. Let me zoom in a tiny bit. I haven't finished the cover yet only because um, that's kind of like always my last thing so I'll real quick just show you the base pages um, there's some flips and flaps in here and some pockets um, everything's really a pocket but um, I started adding some embellishments and just only like a few I really don't have that much in here but I think this is a cutout from this paper line and then this is just a chipboard piece from I don't even know where and then I just use the Martha Stewart butterfly punch here and I punched two out and I just use the Tim Holtz stapler in the center so it's kind of um it kind of pops up which is cute so I just figured um I'm making this for my niece um I'm hoping she'll have this before this video goes up um but I just figured she could put her name here and um this is a flip up page and then this is a pocket here so I just use some of the coordinating papers and then this side here um 
So I have like, um, I do have some blues and greens and mints in this, even though it's for a girl, because she's, she likes all the colors. So let me zoom out again. Sorry, the, the sun is going down a little bit, so the lighting might get a little bit dark. Um, so this is a flip page, um, and it's a pocket, so I used a some cardstock and the Tim Holtz on the edge die to make like a little file folder. And then I used some stamps that I had to do, um, it's kind of like a, what's on trend right now with the currently. So it says reading, watching, thinking, playing, enjoying, so she can fill it out with what she's into right now. Because she's like, I think she's... She's 12, so she'll be 13. So she's at that age where, you know, she's got her stuff that she likes. So, um, and you'll see a lot of these pages are really big and blank. And that is because, let me see if I can pull this out. Um, I just got this die from Hobby Lobby. And it's the Sizzix Polaroid frame die. So I was going to use some coordinating colors and cardstock and some of the pattern papers to make um, big Polaroids. So I have those set aside with the pictures I'm going to be using. So that's why you'll see some really big blank areas. Um, I already have everything kind of laid out, set to the side, because I have some sizing issues for some of the pictures. But um, that's why a lot of these pages are blank. Um, yeah, I don't know why I just told you that. So this is so cute. I think it's, look at how cute, the pink and the ponies. So that's another pocket page. And then this side here, here's a flip out. Um, this is really cute. Um, it's just a few things that I cut out from the paper that I just kind of set there because I know I'm going to have them go there. But this is just like a three by four card and it's got the solar system on it, which is so cool. And then, um, this is just some scrap paper from the collection that was didn't have a uh, didn't have a pattern on it. So I used um, I think this is one of the Heidi Swap stamps to do this calendar um, image, so she can put the year and the month and the date, and then I just stamped hashtag here and now status update. That's I think same thing. I think it's from the Heidi Swap collection. Um, her stamps are so awesome. So. There's some blue polka dotted pattern paper. So this, this, see, I always have a rhyme or reason for what I'm doing, everything. And I, I have blues and I have the yellow. It's very neutral. It's not girly. Because these are going to be pictures of my brother and her together. They always have these funny, silly selfies that they do on Instagram. So because these are blue and masculine, kind of, I'm going to put those pictures here. The ones of them together. Um, so yeah. And then this is a, I love this pattern here. It's so pretty. Just, not even just the colors, but the pattern and everything. It's awesome. So, I love those. And this is from the paper. And I just used a punch to cut it out. Um, since this is so awesome. And then, oh, here's one of the Polaroid dies. Um, it, it's really flimsy, so I might have to back it with some paper. But I just used some washi tape on it. Sorry, I got cut off. Okay, um, I'll try to keep this moving along. So this is one of the Polaroid frames that I cut out that I was telling you about using this die. And I just used regular cardstock, but it seems to still be a little bit flimsy. So I'm thinking I might um, cut some, some more out of some 65 pound cardstock and just mount them together to make it a little bit stronger. But on some of them, I just used some washi tape just to add some interest to the bottom area here. And then this um, is some of the... I used a lot of the scrap from the inside where I cut it out because I had a nice, really big piece of nice cardstock um, from the negative from this. So I used some nice stamps to add um, areas throughout the book where she can personalize it and make her own journaling. So this one says memory, who, where, why, and when. Um, I'm going to be putting the pictures in here from her Instagram so that I can kind of get the most of the album started for her. And then I figured she, um, I'm going to add plenty of spots in here where she can personalize it and add journaling and write who is who and things like that. Um, so this is another... I just... I honestly... I love this paper more after playing with it than I did when I started. I am obsessed with this paper. And there's the jars and then okay so this is the six by six paper but um on the 12 by 12 pad let me see if i can here we go 
12 by 12 pad has all these different mason jars so I fussy cut a whole bunch of them and I was able to pick out some that um, coordinate with paper and hold on let me see if I can show you so the picture that I'm choosing to go there worked out really perfectly because it's gonna be um, let me see if I can show you it's a picture of um, my niece and my sister-in-law and so I was going to put this picture here and in it my sister-in-law is wearing a red shirt and I just thought that that was really cool because it goes along with the uh, mason jar. So again, always things always work out. Um, and then I fussy cut this from the paper and it just says you make my heart sing. And I popped both of those up with pop dots to give it some dimension. And that and then this paper here um, is from the 12 by 12. It's a little bit of a bigger pattern than you see here. Um, so I kept it as a mat to go inside, um, and I used it on both sides. And then this is the back. Um, this is just some scraps that I fussy cut just to make a little embellishment, because um, that's going to go, there's a big picture I have planned here. And then that's my back cover. So I have, how many hinges? One, two, three, four. So I have five hinges, and you can see it's, it's a nice sized book. Um, I don't like the books that have the huge, huge spines. I just don't think it's realistic. So I'm more of a, like how thick is this spine? This spine is two inches, not even. Um, so I think that's a nice, a nice size. Um, and I love how the tabs stick out. This is just using a punch. Um, these tabs are from a punch that I have and um, they're so awesome and I just use plain white cardstock for that so um, those are the inside pages um, I will definitely be back to show you an after because that rarely happens so when I do I'd like kind of want to show everyone I can finish stuff um, a lot of crafters have the same problem so I don't feel that bad um, plus I do work full-time um, and it makes it really difficult um, to get a lot of this stuff done you have to sit down and do it here and there and then all of a sudden like a month is gone <laughs> so I've been trying to keep up with this one um, just working with the papers alone has made me totally stay on board with it and then real quick this is the same collection the same paper collection um, this is just the one that I have that's more like boy themed so let's see where I'm at here um, Sorry, I just, this is kind of like my process. This is how I do things. Um, all right, good. So I do already have the papers glued down. Um, this, each flap, each, um, each, oh my gosh, I'm not even going to know what to say. Each assembly, let's call this an assembly, is your pocket and what's going to attach to your hinge. Um, so you can see I still just have blank photo mats inside that haven't been worked with yet, but I have a pocket here and see that? I actually use my magnets in this one. So I love that. Um, and this is why I was saying it has kind of like a nautical theme because I have like the anchors and I have a punch. That's just washi taped down because I haven't decided where I want to put it. But um, And then this is going to be pockets for tags. Um, this folds down here. So here's the magnet. I still have not covered it with paper, but I love that. Um, just putting things here and there, deciding where I want things. Um, this I actually used my, um, I guess you would call it like a film strip edge punch, um, there. So that's cute. And then... I guess that's going to be a flap on the back cover. So that's kind of like a preview of like the in-between. Like, you know, it starts out as paper and then I have my prepped each um, prepped page assembly. And then eventually each of those assemblies gets mounted onto the hinge and so on and so forth. Follow the tutorial and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so yes, thank you so much for letting me show you what I've been working on and hopefully I can get the second one done pretty quickly so I can have another one to share with you. And then as far as what's to come after that, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to CKC again, this time it's in May, usually it's in April, but I'm going again in May and I'm thinking of what 
I, I don't think I'm going to be taking any classes there. I think this time I'm just going to do the crop. I've never done a crop before and I was thinking of just bringing all of my Project Life binders because I'm not as far as I want to be. Like I have all my pictures in the pages but I haven't I haven't like coordinated like the kits, like the journaling cards. I haven't I haven't done with it what I want done with it or journaled or anything. So I just but I still have been making the conscious effort of putting in my pictures and making sure they're all there and documented, but I'm rambling. But anyway, that's my plan. And then hopefully I'll have more to share with you from CKC. I'd like to vlog again while I'm there. I thought it was pretty fun. I was a little bit uncomfortable last time last year, but I'm hoping I'll be less uncomfortable um, vlogging while I'm there. So we'll see. But I'll be back to show you this. And like I said, I'll try to do a process video of when I'm embellishing. It may not be... Um, in real time, it depends on how long it takes me, and I don't know how to voice. I don't know how to do voiceovers, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. But I will see what I can do, and um, I just want to thank everybody for watching and leaving such nice comments. Um, some of you private message me, and I think that's great. Um, and I just hope you guys enjoy. And um, if I don't inspire you, I can at least lead you to the right place on how to make some of the stuff that I make. Um, because I got started the same way, just kind of peeking through videos and getting information that way. So thanks guys so much for watching and I'll be back um, soon. So have a great day. Bye.